whole thing without music. That's not looking good.
But if you ain't saved, this is the only heaven you ever see. Woo! Amen. <laughs> Amen. Ready? Let's do because of you. Again. 
not everything necessary, but some things, okay? You know, I wouldn't trade my life for the world. I wouldn't trade my kids for the world. I might let them out for a little while, but I'm not going to trade them. My kids, that is. My wife stays with me. Hey, Amen. But I, there's a lot of things in my life I could do with other girls would, but I can't. And so what I do is, I can't do anything about yesterday, but I can do something about today and do something about tomorrow. And so we're going to talk today, simple, simple, simple. This is going to be a two or three part series, I'm not sure yet, but it's all got to do with, with us and how we grow as Christians and how to be a better you. How many like to have a better marriage? You can raise your hands. Fellas, if you want to get grinding once right now, raise your hand. I, my, my marriage is great, but anytime I can get it better, yes. How many like to have, have a better family situation? Just raise your hand. Hey, remember, fellas, you get very important every time you raise your hand. All right. And how many like to have a better job relationship? Raise your hand. We're going to talk about all that right now, and we're going to let God do something special for us. Turn to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Stand for the reading of the word. Philippians Chapter 2. God is so good. All the time, God is good. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. We, we, we skidded all around this last week. In the last two weeks, we've been, we, we even used this same scripture, but we were in John 13 with foot washing and the towel, the ministry of the towel, or using the towel or the whip when you're with people. Now we're going to take it even, even deeper. And now we're going to talk about, about how to. Uh, get yourself in a position that's going to really make a difference in your life and those around you. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. If there therefore uh, any consolation, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill you my joy that you may be like minded. Y'all say like minded. Look at my look up beside somebody and say, it needs to be thinking a lot. <laughs> yeah, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or make war, but in loveliness of mind, let each esteem others better than ourselves. Let not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient of death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly, had also highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and things in heaven and earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Stretch forth your hands this way. Lift your eyes toward heaven, Father. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this chance, this opportunity to be with you today, God, to share in your word, to be with our friends and our families. Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint the way that only you can. I ask you right now, Father, to minister God in the way that only you can. Lord, we know, God, that apart from you, we can do nothing, but with you, we can do all things. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch us, to anoint us, Lord, anoint our ears so we can hear, anoint our spirits so we can receive. And, Father, I ask you right now, anoint our hearts, Lord, that we, we crave you and crave what you've got for us. Lord, you're awesome, you're powerful, and there's none like you. In the name of Jesus, we praise your name. And thank you for what's about to happen. And the church said... Amen. 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 Y'all can be seated. Give the Lord a hand clap and praise. Go ahead. A wife, this is from the old book. A wife had a bag full of used clothes. <laughs> so she's told her, so the wife's talking to her husband. She says, I have a bag full of used clothes I'd like to donate to charity. The husband, why not just throw these things in the trash? That'd be much easier. Wife, she said, but there are poor, starving people out there who can really use these clothes. The husband said, honey, anyone who fits in these clothes are not starving. <laughs> the husband is currently recovering from his surgery. <laughs> Isn't God good? 
All right, I got a little war going up here in this model truck here, bro. I don't know what's going on, but I don't know if it's blasting them, but it's blasting up here in the monitor. It is, it, you know what's going on? If it's in that monitor, it's not the house. Okay, then we'll turn this off. All right, let's try it again. All right, thank you, Ed. Still, okay, that's, that's a little bit. All right. So now, I got a question to ask everybody today, and I want you all to be honest. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to check any boxes. You don't have to tell somebody next to me he's talking about me. And definitely look at somebody and say he's talking about you. Just quietly... Under your breath, just say, thank you, God. Okay? Because I promise you, if you're here today, part of this is going to go to you. Amen? So now, let me ask you a question. Now, does this kind of look like you? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And have you ever fallen into a spiritual rut? You're in a rut now. You, you, you really can't find the praise that you want. You really can't see the words not doing it for you. You know, uh, you're trying to worship and it's not happening. All this stuff's going on around you. And so you find yourself in a spiritual rut. Now, now what happens in a spiritual rut? And, and this describes you. Remember, don't raise your hand unless you want to. First off, just miserable. Somebody in a spiritual rut is just absolutely spiritual, I mean miserable, and they're actually miserable because they're uncomfortable. Look at that guy. There's no way he can be comfortable in that rut. Number two, they're obstructed. They're hindered. He's having a hard time moving forward. He's even having a hard time moving back because any way he moves, he's going to fall deeper in that rut. So, 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 again, think about it. They're miserable, they're obstructed, and they're hopeless. Because honestly, without proper help and guidance, they're going to find no way out of what they're in. You know what a spiritual rut is? A spiritual rut is nothing more than a grave with both ends kicked out of it. Amen? A grave with both ends kicked out. You're sitting here in that grave, and you're, 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 you're miserable. You're, you're miserable, you're obstructed, you're hopeless. And somebody comes by and says, what's happening? And you go, nothing. How you doing? I'm doing great. Well, you may be talking that talk, but I see you. And I see you right there in the middle of that rut. So then, once you're in that rut, what's left? Well, two things. One, you're lame. You're lame. You can't move forward, you can't move backwards, you're just kind of stuck, you're scared to move. So you find yourself being lame. Spiritually, you are lame. And what usually happens is because when we get lame, what we try to do is to blame. That rounds on. Yeah, it does. We want to blame somebody else. We want to blame our parents, we want to blame our children, we want to blame our spouse, we want to blame our work. We're going to blame all kinds of things while we're being lame. I'm lame because of this person did this, and this person said that, and this person hurt my feelings. So, you're lame, have a tendency to blame, but here it goes. Nothing but the same. Nothing, well, I got nothing too. I must have been sleepy. Nothing but the same. Amen? Nothing but the same. So every day, you're in that rut. You move around a little, just a little bit, just enough to think you're doing something, but you're still in that rut. No matter how you do it, no matter what you do to change, you're still in the rut. Now, so, so what do you do? How, how do you get out of this rut? How, how do you get out of what you got into? And I promise you, it's not very comfortable. Amen? So, 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 so what do we do? How do we get out of this rut? Now, if you notice here, there's a man in a hole, he's in a rut. He's blaming people and giving the shovel to somebody else to get him out of the rut. Of course, you want to give it to God, yes, but if I'm blaming everybody else, you get me out, you got me in here, you get me out. That's not the way to do this. So, if you find yourself in a rut, number one, you find yourself digging a hole, number one, quit digging. Number two, 
Throw away the shovel! And let God take control. So watch, here he is. Realize, now we're talking build a new you. We already saw the, the, the blueprint up there. Build a new you. What you got to do is you got to realize that you got a part to play in this. You have to realize that our part to play is, number one, is the attention that we have. We have what, what we see has a lot to do with what kind of rut we're in. And then our attitude. How we see things. So what we see, how we think about what we see, and then our actions. How we respond. So, so, so here's how you get in a rut. You can blame everybody you want to. You can try everything you can, but the more you blame, the more you blame, the more you're lame, the more you're lame, the more you get the same. Amen? It's all that. Y'all say it with me. The more you blame, the more you're lame. The more you're lame, the more you get the same. Say that with me again. The more you blame, the more you're lame. The more you're lame, the more things stay the same. All right. So we're going to talk about this. Like I said, it's going to be a couple of sermons at least, but we got to figure this thing out. Okay, I'm going to try to help you, help you get out of this rut and try to, try to be, a, be a better person. Building a better you. You know, Brandon today, it was funny because because Brandon, uh, I, I told him, I, I, I saw all of, Brandon, you mind if I tell you this? I'm not going to tell all of it. I'm going to tell part of it. I want to be in his own dog and say, you're looking mighty beautiful today. I can't say much for the old man up there with guitar. And he said, you better not call me beautiful. And I said, well, there's only one man I call beautiful. And he said, I said, yeah, and he said, yeah Paul Newman. I said, no. <laughs> no, not Paul Newman. It was Brother Hayslip. Brother Hayslip was in intensive care, hadn't talked all day. And when I went to go see him, he was dying. When I went to go see him, they said, he's not going to talk to you, but you can try it anyway. And when I got in the door, I said, what's happening, brother? And he said, Brother David, come over here. And we got talking, and I told him, he said, he's not doing good. And I said, brother, you're beautiful, man. You're absolutely beautiful. That's the only man I ever told was beautiful. So, so I'm going to leave it at that, Brandon. But then Brandon did say this, if you could. And I'm stopping at this, Brandon. If you could pick who you wanted to look like to, to be beautiful, who, who would you pick? I said, I want to be Brandon Richards. <laughs> And we'll leave, we'll leave the rest alone, okay? <laughs> All right. So now, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Now, now, who are we trying to emulate anyway? Jesus. Who is our greatest example? Jesus. Who we want to be like and want to have his love bestowed upon us, not only his love, but his approval on our life. You've got his love no matter what. You don't have to work for his love, but you do have to work for his approval. Okay? So now, so here we go. Let this mind, that word mind <coughs> is attitude. You know, I see people every day, I see them at the jail, I see them at Boat Jail, Boat County, Infant, and I see them at the hospital, I've been to the hospital a whole lot lately, and and just in church, whatever. And usually when I see somebody, before I ever get a chance to open my mouth to talk to them, I've already seen their attitude. Their attitude is speaking so loudly that the attitude comes up. And before it gets a chance to come out, it shows right here. And how they hold their body, their body language. Their body language shows I'm having a bad attitude today. Leave me alone. And so, when people see you, do they run and hide or do they run to you? And sometimes you may be them, but as other times when they saw you and they felt that you weren't having the best of days, and so they just left you alone. Let this mind, this attitude, be in you. You see, my attitude, honestly, has nothing to do with my circumstances. You know, a guy came up, a guy, his apprentice came up to sell us something at the door yesterday. And then they said, tell them whatever they're trying to sell, we've already got. <laughs> and we really did already have it. That was a cool thing. 
And I said, dude, you're wasting time. And he said, well, just look, mine's better. And I said, no, minding her is better. He goes, well, can you at least get her out here? I said, you don't want her out here. <laughs> and then I said, she said, no, and I'm, I, I'm trying to trying to do things on good here. She said, no, and that's what I said, no. And the thing was on behind the camera, I said, how am I doing today? And he said, happy wife, happy lot. And I said, no, 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 happy wife, there's a good chance, a better chance you can have a happy life. And then Linda told me, no, happy spouse, happy house. That I like, happy house, happy spouse. And so, so I got a chance to talk to him about his attitude. And by the time I got to talk about attitude and, and joy and happiness and all this, human as apprentice, he finally said, okay, y'all don't want anybody. He was a good guy. But once I got preaching to him, he said, I, I, okay, I, I, they got to read what all these people have said. They'd like to see you too. They said, good, bye. All right. So now, let this mind, this attitude be. <coughs> you know, back in the 1800s, and you hear it on the cowboy shows, they don't say, let me alone. They say, leave me be. Leave me be. Be. That was the instructions of, of how things were back in that day. Leap me be. Uh, in other words, look, that word be means constant. It means, look, don't look, constant. I need to have a constant attitude whether things are good or things are bad. I need to have a good attitude, be constant in my attitude whether they're going in my direction or they're going away from me. I need to have, and you need to have a, a good, godly attitude attitude no matter what and he, just to make it a little better it says you it's personal we need to keep a good attitude no matter what you see jesus i'm not gonna keep you long but i'm gonna keep you for a while anyway <laughs> jesus attitude toward others was he was a servant his attitude toward himself was he had no problem with being a servant I love that. There's some people that think once they get to a certain certain area or certain thing in life, and, and, and just I thought of the first first part of the foot washing thing, the very first uh, first very first sermon of the foot washing. I want to say it again. George Washington wearing a cloak, he's covered up. He comes up on the guys who are trying to rebuild a bridge, and the corporal's out there telling the guys, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, move that board, move that board, pick up that, pick up that big log, move that log. And George Washington says, well, they, this lot of guys want you to help them. And he said, don't you see I'm a corporal? He says, oh, yeah, dude, I'm sorry. Then he throws off his cloak, and he sees now he's looking at General George Washington. General George Washington goes down there and helps him put it in place. A lot of corporals watch him. He helps him push that log in place. And when he gets up out of the ditch, he looks over at the guy that's going to put him in that log and says, next time you need some help, you call your commander-in-chief. I'll be right here to help you any way I can. That's the servant leader. And then that's wanting to make a difference in somebody's life in such a way they'll see it. <clears throat> you know, we live in this, I'm telling you, when I was working at Fountain, the uh, very first six months, I had so many people telling me, it's not my fault, not my fault, not my fault. And I said, that's why nothing ever gets fixed. That's why every time y'all try to put anything into position, y'all do the same thing. It's not my fault, it's his fault. He goes, it's not my fault, it's his fault. And I said, dudes, nobody's going to get fired here. But if we don't fix this problem, everybody's going to get fired. Tell me how to fix this problem. I went to the very bottom, as far down as you can go, and started to ask him, but they were always, it's their fault, it's his fault, it's his fault, it's his fault. You know what? If you want a better life and a better you, quit looking for somebody to blame Quit looking for something to blame. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I ran across a few, ran across a few things, and I, I just wanted to want to read them to you. Get ready, we're gonna play the blame game. <laughs> You're driving 100 miles an hour in a 45 zone. <laughs> you ever done that? <coughs> Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand, you bro. <laughs> I have to say, I'm going. How many? How many has ever gone over 45 in a 45 zone? Yeah, brother, what do you feel today? You ready? Ready? 
You're driving 100 miles an hour in a 45 zone. You lose control, flip your car on a sharp curve, critically injure yourself. Who's that fault? No, not you. It's the highway department for not making making the degree of banking on that curve great enough to keep you on the road at 100 miles an hour. So you sue the state and win. Alright, you're wearing a t-shirt that needs to be ironed. You're in a hurry, so instead of taking it off, you try to iron it with it on. Uh, <laughs> and guess what? That's right, you get burned. Shame on you, right? Nope. It is the company who made the iron. They should have warned you that ironing clothes by their own is dangerous and will burn your body. They sued the iron company and? Yeah. Yeah. Here, here's one everybody's heard of. McDonald's makes hot coffee. And it's really hot. Trying to drive the car, you're eating your egg and muffin, you spill the hot, hot coffee all over yourself. You're a moron, right? Nope, it's McDonald's for making that extra, extra hot coffee. And not letting you know how hot it is. So the girl sues McDonald's and? Yeah, Whoa! They never pay her. That's right. They, yeah. they never pay her. One more. One more. You decide that you need to fix your own TV without unplugging it. You begin your work, and uh oh, you guessed it, you get fried. Dumb, right? No, RCA should have told you that you were at risk for electric shock. So they sued RCA, and guess what? They won. We had a thing somebody else has bought. We're going to laugh, Paul. So, so look, <clears throat> things happen that you can't control, but you can't control your response. So let me just say this again. All right, listen. I can't control what comes to me. I can't stop a bird from landing on my head, but I can't stop it from building a nest. I can't control the darts you throw at me, but I don't have to throw them back. I can control how I handle it. So watch this. I heard people say this all the time. He makes me so mad. She makes me so angry. You ever heard that? Many times. Have you ever said it? Get mad. Right. Oh, yeah. Get ready. Don't throw anything. If you do, make sure, make sure that it's, if you throw fruit, make sure it's not canned. I can catch it up. <laughs> Nobody in this room has the power. To make you mad. That's a bitter field of swallow, and I'm pointing back this way too. You're the only person that can make you mad. Why? What that person did can upset you. That's a fact. What the person did can upset you, it can get you unglued. But you decide how you're going to respond to it. Think about it. Think about this. You see some kid riding down the road on his bike, really, 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 really fast. You don't know this kid. You see a hole in and you go, he's going to want to hit that hole. That's all right. He'll learn better. Or you might say, hey, kid, watch out. Oh, I'm sorry. He didn't hear me. But it's your kid. And you see that coming. What you going to do? You're going to run out of stock. See, your response is in your hands, not theirs. Okay? So now, here we go. Let's, let's, let's keep on moving here. <laughs> so quit looking for somebody to blame or something to blame. But look in and take some responsibility. I, I was reading, you know, there's some of the, y'all seen the lost books of the Bible. Had, there's lost books of the Bible. There's the lost books of the evening. There's the Apocrypha, there's all kinds of books, and there's all kinds of stuff. Well, I have to run across a very strong, this is an Old Testament, New Testament prophet here. Matter of fact, this guy, everybody quotes it all the time, but don't even know. Y'all ready? From the lost book of Yemen. Anybody ever heard of the prophet yet? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> man, oh man, he's an awesome prophet. The prophet Yevett. And the prophet Yevett says, get ready. The prophet Yevett says this, anything before but doesn't matter. Yes, I wrecked my car in a ditch. Oh, I wrecked my, my, my car in a ditch. Yeah, but... I tore up something you had that you loaned to me. Yes, I did tear it up. Yeah, but... Yeah, but... So anything before yeah, but don't even count. It doesn't matter. Now, without raising your... Well, you can raise your hand. Because I do it too. How many has ever quoted from the book of Yeba? <laughs> Just recently, I quoted from the book of Yeba. And then I thought about it and I said, you know what? Yeba is a prophet, and Yeba is, is the sound that his frog makes when he's talking. Yeba, Yeba, Yeba. I got a challenge for you. Ready? Take the sentence, I meant to, but, out of your vocabulary. I meant to, but. You know, it's amazing. Somebody can tell me they're having a hard time, and they really don't understand what's going on in their life, and they really need something to help. And I said, well, here, here, take a sheet of paper, read this. It's only half a sheet. Read this half a sheet, look it up, and start practicing it. And I'll say, I'll see you next week. And then come back the next week, and I said to you, read that paper? Well, well what? Well, I really didn't have time. But it was going to help you, I know, but I really didn't have time. But the same person, I can give the latest, greatest movie to Look at them. They come back next week and said, you see the movie? Oh, yeah, I saw it every night. It was so awesome. I watched it every night. Did anything change from last week in your activities? No, but you could watch a movie five nights a week, but you couldn't read the half a sheet of paper. Oh, yeah, but it's just speaking very, very, very loud. Yep, 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 yep. So, I meant to throw it away. You know, premarital counseling will say, make sure you read this book when we have our next counseling session. And uh, nine times out of ten, Here's what I hear. I didn't have time. Okay. Did you have time to go look at your tux? Did you have time to go look at your dress? Did you have time to look over? The okay, we had all that time. So you're preparing for the ceremony, but you're not preparing for the wedding. What? Well, you got a ceremony down pat. What about if you say I do? Because after you do say I do, <laughs> Anything after I do, whatever's before, I don't count. Amen? Amen. I took him all the time to go. I said, why y'all getting up? We're in love. I just love him so much I couldn't beat him up. I said, why you getting married? I, 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 I won't hurt you. <laughs> Six months later, in my office, she goes, Remember, I said, you said you could, you just love as much as you can eat them up. She said, I wish I did. <laughs> Bill, it better be. I'm getting ready to close, believe it or not. I know you don't believe, but that's a belief. We've only got 20 more pages to go, read. Think better thoughts. Philippians 4 and 8 says, whatever things are a good report, meaning whatever things people are talking about that are good. Good report means it's out in the open. People see it. People know it. It's there. Whatever is a good report. When people see it, they know it's good. When you see it, you know it's good. And here you go. Let's just read it in, in the message. Summing it all up, friends. I say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on the things that are true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, the things to praise, not things to curse, 
put into practice what you have learned from me, what you have heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work, work you into his most excellent harmonies. We get ready to have some fun. Y'all ready to have some fun? Here comes some fun. Look at me. As a man thinks, so is he. That kidney looks in the mirror and sees the light. Wow. That's awesome. Some of us are lions if we look in the mirror and see kittens. Not good. What's going on? We should all, because we're children of the king, should look in that mirror and see a lion. What's happening? What's going on? We got to discipline our thinking. You got to quit allowing negatives to dominate our minds. Quit allowing negatives to dominate our minds. Don't get rid of anybody ever heard of this? You ever heard of ants? You know what ants are? They're automatic negative thoughts. And what happens is we allow the automatic negative thoughts to possess our life. And then the S on ants becomes the automatic negative thought syndrome. I see people like this all the time. And here's some of the excuses that you hear. And if you hear, if this is in your mind a lot, if it's just occasionally, you got an ant. You got an ant. But if it's all the time, you got ants. And God needs to help you step beyond it. So watch this. He's always putting me down. I'm so stupid. I won't get this on time. I just won't try. You never listen to me. Nobody could love me. I feel like staying in bed, but I should go to the gym. I'm a failure. No one understands me. I'm so annoying. Why well, try I'm awful at this? She didn't say hello. She must hate me. I shouldn't get upset over this. You never listen to me. I shouldn't. Wow. If this is the conversation like this, and there's more to it, there's a lot more to it, and I'm working on a sermon that does deal with all of them, there's a bunch of them, but still, if this is in your mind constantly, you got an ant or you got ants. So that, what do we do when we find out there's ants in our life? First of all, we must take deliberate action. You've got to do something. Look somebody else and you've got to learn to Replace your negative thoughts with positive, and you've got to learn how to be optimistic. I'm not talking about riding a Skittle bus and shooting Skittle sunshine everywhere. I'm talking about optimistic. Jesus was optimistic. Okay? So, here it is. So faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. First off, we've got to hear better sounds. Romans 10, 17 through 21. It says, so faith comes by hearing, and that is the hearing of the good news about Christ. You ready? Here we go. I'm coming to you out now. Quit listening to the negative, destructive attack that is happening in your mind. The greatest battlefield you will ever step on, you step on it 24 7. And that is the six to eight inches from here to hear your greatest battleground is in your mind. It's your greatest. And because you can't get away from that, know this, that even if you stop thinking, your brain never stops. Your brain doesn't shut down while you're sleeping for eight hours, five hours, six hours. Your brain is still working. That's why you're, you're dreaming. 
That's why you don't have to wear an oxygen tank when you, when you go to sleep at night so you still breathe. It's because your, your, brain, your brain and your mind never stop working. And so if all you can think about is that you got that you got ants going on, and these ants are going on, and when you go lay down at night, that ant just starts starts whittling away, and it becomes a little termite and it just starts whittling away at your spirit, and it gets you negative, 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 and then it becomes destructive. You know the most destruct the most destructive force on this earth is not a hurricane, it's not a tsunami, it's not an earthquake, it's not an atomic bomb. The most destructive force on this earth are termites. They do more damage in a month's time than you could ever, ever imagine. So now, so if you let these ants keep going and going and going and going, it will dwarf your spirit. We must learn to listen to the good and resist the bad. We must hear from God and he his word. So here I'm getting ready to close right now. Y'all ready? Look at somebody and say, this is good stuff right here. Now how about this? <laughs> so I told you to say it so you ain't getting in trouble. All right, get ready. This is just the first part. There's more coming. If you start building a better you, you will build a better marriage, a better family, a better church, a better workplace. I tell you all the time when I do up for marriage counseling, I say, well, you know, before we work on y'all, let's work on just you over here and you over here. You work on me, you work on me. Quit working on him, you quit working on her. Because when they come in right from the dig get, she needs to, she needs to, he needs to, he needs to. I go, stop! You want a better spouse, be a better spouse. Whatever you want your wife to start doing, you start doing. Whatever you want your husband to start doing, you start doing. And once y'all work on you and let God work on you, then we'll come back together. You want a better family? You be the, you be the kind of person that you want people to be able to run to. The papa, the dad, the brother, the sister, the wife, the mother. Church, you want to see the church grow and prosper? Then... Step up and watch what God can do. Same thing in our workplace. We get ready to close. This time we really are closing. But I'm going to see you want to see something. This week's challenge. Get ready. Whenever you feel the ants attack, automatic negative thoughts. Be your focus on the negative. I remember the older people in here can remember Gulliver's Travels cartoon. You remember there was a little, little guy there, no matter what they did, he goes, it'll never work. It'll never work. It'll never work. Eeyore. And Eeyore too. Yeah. Yep. I promise you, there's somebody in your group that's the first one to say, it'll never work. That's bad enough. But it's worse when it's you all the time. So the ants attack, attack back. Get out some spiritual raid. Spiritual raid, well, that's all I attack my ants with on the ground. I sprayed some this weekend. I pulled a little bit of the trash can, and the ants got in there because of all the rain. They were in there making a little colony. And I went, I went and kicked down the trash can and said, here comes the raid. Have a football helmet on them like I was, you know, they're going to make police rates. Nope. Hands go with me. I said, that's because you mean you had to give a few minutes. I come back, they were, they were like doing this. They were doing this. Man, man, I stopped at the ladies' house. I think I just, I, I'm sorry, but I think I just ran over to your cat. She said, really? My cat said, what did it look like? He went like this. <laughs> Ready. Number one, resist. Negative thoughts start going in your mind. 
It's in your power to resist it. The Bible tells us when Satan is attacking, flee him. Flee him. Or excuse me, resist him. Resist him and he'll flee. Resist him and he'll flee. But that's not exactly all of it. Resist him and he'll flee. How many there resisted Satan and kept on coming? Like a bulldog. There's more to it than just resisting. You gotta resist these negative thoughts. But as a matter of fact, and this is just a quickie, y'all gotta hear me. This is just a quick for all y'all this is not useless knowledge. This is really good stuff. A negative thought in your head weighs eight hundred percent more than a positive thought. So for every negative thought, it's gonna take seven plus positives to, in your mind, your emotional bank, to cancel out that negative thought. That's powerful. Negative sales. Negative, when you watch the news, there's 30 minute news program, you got 15 minutes of commercials, and you got 12 minutes of negative, and you got three minutes of sales. By the way, look what happened to that. Let me show you something a little bit about Something good. Resist. That's not all, it's not all by itself good. Once you resist, you've got to adjust. Once you get in your mind, these are ants attacking me. These are ants. i got to get out of my rain. First, you've got to resist it. And that's not easy, especially when you first start. Because if you've been letting ants attack you, oh, no, 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 attacking your marriage, and attacking your kids, and attacking what you do at work, it's all in your mind because that's the battleground, and ants are in your head. You resist, you adjust, and then you respect the truth. In other words, what does God say about this? You're hearing this, I can't do this, it'll never work. I can't do anything, I can't do anything right. I'm just nothing, nobody. God hates me anyway. See what the Word says. The Word says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible says there's therefore no condemnation of those that are in Christ Jesus. Yea, they will walk through the valley in the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and I step they cover me. As you begin to expect the truth instead of listening to a lie, your life will change. You will turn it around in a day if you can learn to resist, adjust, and inspect the truth. What does God say about this? And then dwell on that truth instead. Well, God said, that I'm more than a conqueror through Him. I am more than a conqueror. Though heaven thorn against me is going to prosper. They mean it won't have stuff against me, but it means it's not going to prosper. It's not going to finish what it's going to do because I am his child. My inheritance with him is he's going to make sure. He, look, he's got good plans for me. He knows his plans for me. And it is to prosper me and to do good for me. I've got to understand that instead of listening to the negative, expect the truth, dwell on the truth. Watch your life and your attitude. <coughs> Shift for the better. That one child I'm looking at the screen too. The only thing I'm spraying. I'm not spraying you, brother. I'm spraying that naked man right there. Okay. okay. I was doing it one day looking at the screen down there, so I ain't got to look up here. And there was somebody sitting right behind it. And he looked over at his wife and said, He looked at me the whole service. <laughs> So I went out to him and said, Why did it make you want to do it? He said, It made me want to repent. I said, Good, you should for me. I wasn't looking at him, I was looking at the screen. One day, after service, I took the evangelist with me and we went to the grocery store to get some hot dogs to cook on the grill. And he walked up to me, and it was at the pig. He said, he said, where is the buns at? And we're at the back of the store. And I looked over like this. <laughs> I said, go down all the way down here 
turns to the left, you'll find the buns. And when I did it like this, I happened to look down there and there was where the beer was at. And the guy had two six packs. And when I went like that, he went, and he put them out and brought out the store. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Holy Ghost timing. Amen. <laughs> the Word of God is alive and powerful. It will set you free. It will comfort you. It will heal you. It will feed your soul. Whatever you focus on is what's going to happen. Brandon, come on up here, bro. Play something for me. Whatever you focus on. When somebody's going through a grief cycle, and I'm doing grief counseling, I give them probably a, a, a list on the front and back has about under 35 scriptures. And I divide it into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I divide them up. And I say, one of these scriptures, I want you to make a copy of it, put it in your car, put it in your Bible, take it to work. And on Monday, you focus on those first scriptures that I've got underlined for Monday. You focus on them. And whenever you start hurting, and whenever you start uh, feeling uh, sad, and you start feeling uh, pain because you feel like you didn't do what you could do, and blah, 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 and you just start getting overwhelmed with ants, read those scriptures. The same way the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And I'll promise you, when you come back next week, there'll be a change in your life. And I have yet, 30-something years of this, I have yet... If somebody actually read it and didn't say, well, I didn't have time. But you had time to go those negative thoughts. You had time to let the devil beat you up. You had time for those ants to attack you. But anybody ever read those at the end, when they come back the next week, they went, wow, that was so powerful. And I feel so free on the inside. That's because you're attacking the negative thoughts with some positive truth. The craziest thing I could ever think of lately, Thursday, going to, going to the Pentecostal Center, I was leaving the church, getting ready to go take care of some business before I went to bed. And I get a text, are you going to be free tomorrow from the pit? And I said, what do you need? They said, there's a new person in B5. I <coughs> had a meltdown today. And I think he could use talking with you. It's okay. I said, but I'm going tonight. I just take care of the night. And I have my team, Bethany. God's got this. But I also put on one, God's got this. Be the way I win. And then I put on the one that has scripture on it. I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah 29 11. I walk into B5, and there's the guys I just finished with on Monday, and one new guy. <clears throat> and they said, that guy needs you. And I walked over, he turned around and looked me in the face, and I said, that guy looks so familiar. He stands up and looks like he'd seen a ghost. He looks at me and says, Yeah, thing. And I said, I'm her dad. He says, That's what I meant. And then he started crying. He said, I'm so sad about because everybody had one of these. I'm so sad about what happened to Bethany. And he stood up and he grabbed me. He started crying. And he'd been with Bethany for several years earlier at a daycare where she worked. And I said, do you want to go through the box and talk? So we went in the box and talk. I thought it for an hour. Maybe longer. And he told me, he said, I will never guess in a hundred years I'd be in here None of that, I'll never guess in a million years that you'd be in here right now. Talking. 
And I looked at him, and I pulled the first one off, and I said, you know, this time, just the while I said, God's got this. I put it on his arm and started crying and said, it's okay. I said, no matter what, the way you mean, so I pulled the second one off and gave it to him. He started crying again and said, it's okay. I said, God's got a plan for your life. And I pulled on Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11. So everybody else only had one. <clears throat> he comes out of the box with three. Instead of crying, he was laughing. He was smiling. God, it really does work in that boy's life that night. But all the guys can see is he had three braces. They had one. I always trying to make sure they got the same thing. And so they said, why does he got three braces? I said, look, calm down. I said, I'll bring you some more braces on Monday. I promise I'll bring you some more braces. I said, but this guy here, one of the guys went all by, I said, I told him. I told him. And the God was going to take care of him. And he did And what I did, to do all the time, is when I found the ants, I got up my bottle of rave, and I began spraying. That's amazing. Amazing. Because when this is your rave, Something happens. God's got you. Everybody stand. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> every hip bow, every eye closed. Mm -hmm. Of course, let me ask. I always like to ask this first. There's somebody here that would say, I'm not as close to God as I would like to be, or I'm not even, I'm not even saved, or I'm, I'm saved, but I'm not as close to God as I would like to be. But nobody looking around, every eye closed, every eye, every, every head bowed, would you put that hand up and say, you're talking to me, Pastor. I'm not where I need to be. Put that hand up. Touch him, Lord. Touch, touch him right now. Touch him. Maybe you're here. You're saved, but the battlefield that you step on every day, the one you carry around in your head, that you can't seem to shake, takes control of your life constantly. You find yourself in a desperate, dangerous, destructive pattern. God brings positive in your life and before it can even get a chance to grow. The ants come in. The ants go marching one by one. And it's not hurrah, hurrah. And you're needing some relief. Your marriage needs that relief. Your family needs that relief. Your job needs that relief. Your church needs that relief. Because you're letting ants not only run your life, but they're ruining your life. And you're needing God. I'm not talking about Pollyanna stuff. I'm talking about God's powerful word. God's got this. God's got this. God's got you. God's got your marriage. God's got your family. God's got your church. God's got your workplace. He sees somebody that'll pull out a, a can of spiritual raid and go in there and attack them rascals before they build a nest and destroy them. Now, every head bowed, every eye closed, we're going to really get down now. Nobody looking around. If you would say, Pastor, 
those hands are terrible and they're constantly ruining my plans and ruining my life when nobody's looking around. This is the very beginning of picking up that can of raid. We just say, God, say, Pastor, I need God to help me. Take care of those ants in my life. Just quick and the hand. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's pray this together. Lord, I can't do anything by myself. I've tried. I keep falling. I keep falling. Ask you right now to come in my life very strong. Help me to step beyond all the nakeds. Help me pick up the rage and take out the demands. I thank you, God, for what you're doing in my life. And I thank you, God, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the means. Ask you right now, Lord, to help me change my focus. Help me resist. Help me adjust. Help me inspect. And help me to dwell in your word. And I thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. You're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. There's nothing you can't do. I thank you today for my life in you and for your thoughts toward me, which obviously are better than the thoughts Satan has toward me and even I have toward me. And I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer, and after we say the Lord's Prayer, we're going to be to dismiss us in prayer. Ready? The God is here. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we give our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, power, and glory. Heavenly Father, be with us in our time of need. Give us the strength to carry us through your strength for you can overcome any situation that we are in. And if we will put our trust in you, that we will change our lives and turn around all the misery that is coming at us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.